everybody, and thank you for joining me on the first ever episode of Daily Signing by 12 Fun and Games, your daily talk show about everything that happens in the games industry around the globe. Uh, today's topics we're going to be covering should streamers pay a license to developers to stream their games? We are going to take a look at the young Nathan Drake. Uh, that is happening in the movies right now, uh, Tom Holland, the actor playing him. Uh, we're going to be talking about Kojima making the next walking simulator. Uh, more news on Sony, we're talking about the streaming, the live streaming platforms uh, that are coming to the PS5. Um, we are also talking about Nintendo localizing Mother... No, no, sorry. Fire Emblem 1. Yikes. Uh, there's also going to be some cool trailers at the end and some funny, funny, funny picks that we need to talk about, all right? So, without further ado, let's get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get dive into the news, remember, if you like what you see and you're looking this not on audio form, because technically you can't look anything on audio, uh, but if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, make sure to leave a like, and make sure to hit that notification bell because if it's daily signing, you gotta make sure that you sign in daily to everything that we talk about. All right, let's start with the first topic that we got for you today. First of all, we got this beautiful tweet that showed up this morning, and uh, this is from Alex Hutchinson. I think he's the creative director, as he is a creative director in Google Stadia. Uh, he worked on the Savage Planet, Far Cry 4, Assassin's Creed 3, yada yada. The main thing uh, that has been going on lately is there has been a lot of DMCA strikes for a lot of Twitch streamers, either partners and affiliates. And what that means is people uh, streaming music without actually owning the license, commercial license to stream the music. So he goes and he says, it's amazing to me that people are upset at someone saying that the creators of content should be allowed to make some of the money from, their, from other people using their content for profit. He's mainly referring to the fact that streamers do not or streamers or youtubers do not pay the uh the developers a license a commercial license to actually use their game and they should pay some royalties to meet or, or the license to actually go in and be able to show the content and create content with it online um so my first thought when i first heard this is like how many like have i ever bought a game due to me watching somebody else stream it and the first answer was yes. There's, there has been a lot of times that I actually gone in, seen somebody else streaming a game that I wasn't either wasn't in my radar, or I wasn't actually interested on, and then seeing them play a little bit more, it's like okay, I'm I, I really want to try this out. But I don't think it's a one coin, no, not one coin, like a, a one box fits all, right? Because there's def so many genres in the gaming industry. So I started thinking. Um, for game as a services, I look at streamers because I like to see their high level gameplay that they provide. Uh, they give us also like tips and tricks, and they it's it's also see to fun the the fun to see the banter between them and their friends when they're playing. Uh, there's also like sandbox and RPGs. Those are mainly about creation. So I really want to see what other people are creating and some of the tips and tricks that they do to basically give us a little bit more functionality to the game. And I think it just adds a lot more because if it was just a sandbox games and nobody was creating anything, then what's the point, right? It's, it's a lot more fun when you see other people's creation than it is to play by yourself and not be able to share that with anybody else. And then we, we talk about action adventure games. Uh, that one is a little bit dependent, right? Because if it's a game that has a lot of story, uh, it depends whether or not you want that story spoiled. And that's when we get into, but. Other than that, you want to see gameplay because there's socially another person that really dives and is a, gains some mastery into the game that you really want to see play. Um, just also comedic aspects for some of the people. You just like the streamer. Um, now, the main part that is a bit of it if is the one that we talk about here is the story-driven games. Um, for me in particular, though, I really... If I watch somebody play a story-driven game, it's either one, because I'm on the fence of whether or not I'm going to get it, or two because I don't really care about the game at the moment. Like I, I, I wasn't gonna buy it to begin with. So when I go in, and sometimes this happens, I go watch somebody that's streaming a, a single player game with a story campaign, and I find it's like, oh, actually the story, interesting. It's a, it's a little bit interesting. So at that point I go in and I say, okay, maybe I should give it a shot. So 
for the most part, I feel like it just expands on uh, like having uh, having the ability for streamers to show this content and everything. Um, a lot of people are calling it free advertisement. It's not necessarily, I wouldn't say like free advertisement, uh, but I would say that having the ability to produce content, it actually expands the games, it expands the game industry, it expands awareness. Like I don't think gaming will be so accepted in main culture nowadays if it wasn't for all these big platforms and this big, uh, so many people trying to create content for it. So now, restri like adding this license uh, for games, um, it's going to be very hard, especially for variety streamers. Imagine having to pay a fee for every single game that you try to stream. That's going to be, first of all, very costly. And it's going to very it's going to make sure that the space for people is going to be very narrowed down. There's not going to be as many streamers out there. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence here. Uh, there's obviously different uh, situations. But the funny part about this post is that this is the first time, like if you see here, that Stadia is actually trending on Twitter. <laughs> um, I haven't, I've completely forgotten about Stadia until this point. They also show a little bit of footage of one of the new games that we're going to be showing at the end. But at the same time, it's kind of funny that that's what they made it uh, trend over here. Uh, we got some comments from some other people like Rob Breslo, the, the slasher. He's very famous for talking about the Twitch, uh, not, not necessarily Twitch, but the content creation overall. <laughs> and he goes and says, congrats to Google Stadia on its most talked about day ever. Yikes. And there's also other developers, um, some of them that actually agree with Alec Hutchinson, like Adrian. Um, this Adrian, I'm going to pronounce this wrong incorrectly. Trim Lars. Uh, he's also a creative director at The Astronauts. And he worked on uh, The Banishing of Ethan Carter, which I really like that game. Played it a few days, uh, not a few few years back um so he also talks about and he's mostly looking for a conversation about this not necessarily as a way to say that he's right or he's wrong he's just saying like oh finally somebody had the well i don't want to quote him exactly but somebody had um uh, the bravery to sh to say something like this but it's needless to say that this was not very well received among the community i just wanted to share my own thoughts about it with you uh, but something that did had a, what I would say a positive view or a better than expected view on the industry is the fact that Tom Holland here share his picture uh, in the set as Nathan Drake from Uncharted 4. Uh, as you may know, there may be there has been quite a few years where there has been a lot of back and forth whether this movie for Uncharted was going to be made. Finally, Tom Holland comes out and says, I am the actor. Here is my shot. Um, and it's, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I personally, I, when, the first, when I first saw it, I really thought, first of all, this is a very young Nathan Drake. Um, obviously, if you played the games, it, the, the actual 3D model of Nathan Drake is a lot older than this. And it kind of threw a lot of, a lot of people off. It, a lot of people were also saying that it looks like a cosplay more than an actual movie um, character, which is, I mean, it's fair. It is fair, but at the same time, I that's what I feel like when I see any other like video game adaptation in a movie. So every time that I go and see somebody else to see the streaming something, not streaming something, sorry, when I see somebody, uh, some another movie, I do think of them as more of a cosplay than the actual game because I am used to seeing them in the game, not necessarily in any other form. I do think this is pretty good. This is pretty cool, really. and the other part that I really liked about this is that there are other pictures uh, shared by Nolan North, which is the voice actor for Drake in the Uncharted series. And he's with, he's with Tom Holland. I don't know whether he has any involvement in terms of actually being an actor in it, or he's more of a consultant, given that he played the role for four games. Uh, but there's some artifacts. Uh, if you're watching, if you're seeing this on uh, hearing this on audio, I'm just showing you every single link of every story and every picture that I'm talking about is going to be in the description of the episode. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, but yeah, it. I have. I don't want to say that I want to have high expectations because obviously this is a video game movie and there has been very very few video game movies that I'm actually excited not not necessarily excited about but that actually brought my caught my attention so we'll see how this one goes um also there was a uh, if you see this particular if i go back to the first pose 
you can see that Nathan Fillion was also kind of trending on Twitter because of the fact that many people wanted him to be playing on uh, Nathan Drake. He does have that personality that kind of fits with the character. Um, it also kind of a little bit, it kind of resembles him a little bit. Um, either way, Nathan Fillion, Tom Holland, I think they're both great actors. I'm excited for it. But enough about movies. Let's continue on and talk about more video games. Um, we're going to talk about Kojima, another Sony figure, I would say. Uh, so Kojima Productions is confirms that they're going to be working. They are starting production on the new development of their next game. And then the new walking simulator. Actually, I don't want to call it walking simulator. I actually haven't played the game. I didn't play Dead Stranding, their first, the, the first game that Kojima did as Kojima Productions. Uh, just because, I don't know, there was something about it didn't catch my attention. Maybe I'll play it down the line, but not necessarily my cup of tea when he came out. Um, but he, yeah, he's looking for talent around Tokyo. He's saying that he is looking to hire the best in-class talent to work for our Tokyo studio. Uh, so he's looking just the best of the best. One thing that Kojima does is does it breaks the boundary. Like it breaks your not it, it, anything that you think Kojima is going to produce is going to be completely unexpected and completely different from what you think is going to happen. So uh, this is going to be interesting to see the development of what's going on here. Uh, on more PlayStation related news, though, we also see that there is the new streaming platforms are announced for it. So you can have an Apple TV, Disney Plus. Uh, Netflix, Spotify, Twitch, YouTube, and to come, there's also going to be Amazon Prime Video, My Canal, Hulu, Peacock. I actually haven't heard of anything <laughs> like My Canal, Hulu, Peacock. No idea what those are all about. Uh, personally, um, I do have my my gaming setup is usually around my computer or or around my laptop. So if I'm going to watch a clip on uh, Netflix or any streaming while I'm gaming, I usually have everything around there. And if I'm not gaming, I just go to my PC or my TV and stuff like that. Uh, but that's just my own personal situation. But I, I really, I'm really glad. I remember during the PS3, PS4, uh, Xbox 360 and Xbox One era, uh, the box really matters when you put it in your entertainment system. Nowadays, you have smart TVs are becoming more and more, I would say, mainstream. So Netflix usually comes built into them. So I don't know if, how much of an impact it will have for a consumer, a normal consumer trying to buy a console that is not really a gamer. That used to be the case back in the day. I remember people buying PS3s just because it could play Blu-rays. And, it also, and then they added Netflix and all that sort of stuff. So kudos to them. Good to see. But at the same time, I don't know how much this actually influenced a consumer's purchase decision. As because I think at that point, you're caring more about games. Uh, but also, it's because we are part of the gaming ecosystem. So it will be good to see the data around non-hardcore gamers that actually go and buy this, not based on games, but based on what application it actually contains. All right, that's enough about Sony now. Let's talk about the fact that Nintendo dropped a video on us on that official YouTube channel I'm talking about localizing Fire Emblem 1. So, yeah, looking at the, the YouTube channel, it starts off showing Smash Brothers Melee, which I believe was the introduction of Marth and Roy to the North American audience. Obviously, if, if you are a hardcore gamer and all that sort of stuff, you would know that who Marth and uh, Roy were. But honestly, when I play Smash Brothers Melee, no idea, no idea who those two were. They were cool guys with swords. One of them even shoot fire from had a fire sword. I think that was pretty cool. Uh, but no, the video shows that the game that came out in 1990 and has been Japanese only for a long for the longest time is being localized and being brought to the West. And not, but there, it was a fun, it was an exciting piece of news because if you are a Fire Emblem fan, you can actually figure out where this all started. You can actually see where this all started. The problem is that there is a little bit of mud in between those news items. So the game will cost you $6 to download and it's part of the special 30th anniversary edition. But there is actually, yeah, sorry, there is actually a better edition called the special 30th anniversary edition that will cost $50. And uh, let me show you what that brings you. Uh, right over here. So that's it comes with like the replica game box instructions booklet. It has a deluxe deluxe art book 
the, it's, it's pretty cool, but it also has like the mini Nintendo power collectible. Uh, so it has a lot of piece of coll collect collectible items for a lot of, uh, for the people that really like and are into Fire Emblem. It even brings like a replica of the case, which I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so, but that would cost you $50. So, but if you are collectors, you know, if you know what you're in for, uh, the muddy part about this is first of all, there's two things. One of them is the fact that it is a time exclusive digital edition download again. You can only buy it and download it before March 31st, 2021. I do not know what's the deal with April and Nintendo. I know that that's the end of their fiscal year. What are they thinking? Like, what, what are they What are they planning? Are they thinking that they're going to shut down up in April? I have no idea. They, they did this too with the Super Mario 3D All-Stars game, which includes all... Uh, well, I would say... I wouldn't say all. It includes Mario 64... Super Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy. The only the first one for some reason. It doesn't include the second one. Which is the only game that I didn't play as a kid. So the fact that the second one isn't there, I didn't buy this. I am personally not a fan of this trend going on about limited time releases. Personally for Fire Emblem, not a big deal for me. Um, if you're going to buy it, uh, you, you probably have the time to buy it. Especially because this is very for hardcore people. Uh, but it, it's kind of sad that if you find out late about this for whatever reason or you get into Fire Emblem a little bit later and you really want to see where it all started that you won't have the accessibility just because of some time um, exclusive. I really want to know why they're doing this and I hopefully it stops very soon. I would I thought that it was going to stop just with the 3D Mario but it seems to keep going. These are smaller releases that I'm okay with uh, but with Fire Emblem. Now Super Mario 3D All-Stars not a small release because it does it that game actually has a lot of content for especially for people that didn't get to experience those 3d mario games in the past for me it wasn't that big of a of a deal because i already played those games it was only a matter if i wanted to relieve them or uh, play them with somebody else essentially not a big fan of the trend though hopefully it's hopefully it ends soon i really hope so um, but those are the major news that we got for you today Thank you for joining me on the first ever episode of Daily Signing. Of course, we're trying to come in to you daily to talk about the various games and all the news around the gaming industry. Um, if you like what you see and you like what you hear, remember you can leave us a comment, a review on the podcast or on the YouTube video if you're watching this on video. Uh, if you want, if you, let me know about you, your thoughts about the topics because today we're very subjective topics, especially the streamer one. That's one particular topic that I want to discuss with everybody else, just to see what you guys think. Should streamers actually go in and pay a license to be able to stream games online? If you get, you can do so by writing on the comments below or by joining the Discord and having that conversation there with me as well. And with that, I leave you with our daily sign-off.